What's up, Hills Church? Good morning. So glad you all have decided to join us this morning uh, on this wonderful Sunday. Five days into fall already. Uh, year's almost almost over. Um, but whether, wherever you are, <laughs> praise God, <laughs> right? Wherever you are, whether on Facebook or YouTube, go ahead and type something in the comments. Interact with one another. We at the Hills Church here believe that God has called us to follow Jesus, love our neighbors, and build an economically and racially diverse church. Say that with me. We say it every Sunday. We here at the Hills Church believe that God has called us to follow Jesus, love our neighbors, and build an economically and racially diverse church. My name is Najee, one of the pastors here at the Hills. Let's sing together and give God praise. Come on. Come on, sing, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I will worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Sing it out. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul. I will worship Your holy name. Oh, you're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. I'll worship His holy name and sing like your holy name and on that day when my strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and forevermore, forevermore. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. I'll worship His holy name. sing bless the Lord oh bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul I'll worship your holy name Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your court. 
voice than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Sing better is one day. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Worship your holy name. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We bless your name. Just a moment in God's presence changes everything. God's presence changes lives, it changes futures. And, uh, you know, just as, as we move into the, our teaching here, would you just invite God's presence into the room where you are? Maybe your living room, your, your kitchen, maybe you're still in, in, the, in the bedroom, wherever you are. Would you say, God, would your presence come? Could we, could we just get a taste of your presence? It's been a long, dry summer. And we just need God's refreshing in our lives sometimes. So God, would your presence come? Would you be with us? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm Matthew, one of the pastors of the Hills Church. Again, I want to just welcome you. Thank you for, for joining with us. If you're a guest, we'd love to connect with you. There is a link in the comments that takes you to a brief form. And if you'll fill that out while we're live, we'll donate $5 to stop human trafficking on your behalf. So it's a, it's a win-win. We get to know you a little bit. We're, su we're supporting the, the ending of, of uh, human trafficking. And so just take a moment and do that. We'd love to know that, that you're there. Uh, our check-in question for today, um, and every week we have a check-in question. It's just a way for us to get to have a little fun in the comments with each other. Uh, but our check-in question today is, what is your favorite chain restaurant or fast food restaurant? What is your favorite chain restaurant? And I know in Denver, like just that even question is anathema, like because we don't eat at chains, we eat local. And, and we, you know, kind of <laughs> get a little snobby about it if we find out someone's gone to a chain restaurant. We're like, why? Uh, but just for today, play along. Like, what is your, maybe it's a IHOP, Red Lobster, um, or something like Sonic, you know, uh, Chick-fil-A. Whatever, whatever is your, your favorite chain restaurant, put it there in the comments. And now, if I am not paying for dinner, my favorite chain restaurant, Fogo de Chao, oh. the Brazilian steakhouse. If, if you've never been there, they just bring around the meats and, until you're full, and it's uh, fantastic. I've been there twice, haven't paid yet, so it's pretty, pretty good. Uh, if I do have to pay, we're probably going something like uh, Famous Dave's or even Olive Garden. You know those breadsticks, right? 
breadsticks, salad. Come on now, can I get a witness? Uh, but we are on location today. You might notice uh, some of our, our background here. It's, it's uh, some pinks, purples, and, and blues. But we are on location at Tween Boutique. And we have the, uh, the owner, the president, the CEO, Tay, founder, if you want to come on down, Tay. So Tween Boutique, we're on uh, Bruce Randolph and Columbine. 25, 25, 11. So Tay, thanks for having us. Thank you for coming. Yeah, for yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about Tween Boutique and just, yeah, hold that right up. Okay. Right up. <laughs> tell us a little bit about Tween Boutique, what, what you sell here, what, what you do here. Um, Tween Boutique is a positive self-empowerment clothing brand for girls. Um, we promote girls to be positive and love themselves on the inside instead yeah. of always fancying up the outside and to give them value for their future. Um, Tween stands for tenacious, well-spoken, educated, esteemed, and noble. All right. And All right. we have the, the clothing that represents um, whatever characteristic each girl mm. is attracted to most. You know, we have tenacious. If you want to represent yourself well spoken or educated. Yeah. Educated is my daughter's favorite. So. <laughs> um, okay. But I have um, a little bit of everything for a little bit of every size. Mainly um, it's for girls who no longer fit in girl style clothes. Sure. So okay. it's the adult sizes for the most part for, for now. Mm -hmm. Um but we really want to encourage, encourage the girls to be um, positive while being uh, self-aware, you yeah. know, as far as the clothing is concerned. Because yeah. so many times, you know, they're promoting a certain behavior and clothing style that I personally feel is inappropriate. So. I got you. I got you. And, and so do you have, so it's clothing here. What, what goes on? Back, back there. Um, I have a hair salon in the back. Um, okay. I was originally here for 11 years. Okay. In the front, this front area um, mm -hmm. as a salon. They, things changed, you know, mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. And um, we had some construction, a facelift, you know, have you in. Um, mm -hmm. I moved the salon to the back and then kind of just made tween the forefront. Gotcha. Gotcha. So you, you've been over here a few years. Yes. Yeah. As far as tween... Um, we've been open for a year and five months. Okay. Um, so we're pretty new, you yeah. know, building the brand. And, it, and so we're, we're at uh, Bruce Randolph and Columbine. And what, what are your normal hours if someone wanted to come down and check you out? So unfortunately, right now, I don't have normal hours. Mm, but gotcha. um, you can shop on http forward slash tween, dot sh tween boutique dot shop. Okay. Um, to get the attire there. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll put that in the video in the comments so people can go right to it, okay, check okay. out what you're selling. All right, awesome. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's kind of been hard having, you know, the regular scheduled hours with COVID and yeah. sitting here and spending time when no one is walking in. And yeah. pretty much the, the demographics for now doesn't really fit the tween mm -hmm. concept, but I know there's a purpose and a plan for the future. I got you. That's sure. Um, so you've, you've been in Denver, you said your, your entire life. What, what is something that you would say that you, you love about Northeast Denver? Um, I love uh, Northeast Denver because when it comes down to it, we all unite. Hmm. You know, I've seen some incidents happen. There was a, a really bad car accident and the whole neighborhood came together, yeah. you know, and, and it really blessed me to see everyone on one accord, trying to help, you know, and, and that really touched me. Yeah. And you, you mentioned uh, COVID just a little bit. Has that, or how has that impacted your business? Wow. So it definitely made an impact because we were closed. We were non-essential. Um, I couldn't do hair in the back. Yeah. No one was um, browsing the attire. So um, it, it's pretty been detriment. It's been pretty detrimental to my finances and, I'm just really just trying to stay afloat right now. Um, not really getting too much support as a small business from mm -hmm. the large grants, you know. Um, right. It's, it's been tough, but God has definitely been faithful. Yeah, 
Yeah. So uh, I just want to encourage our, our folks who are watching, if, if you have a young lady who needs some clothes or if, if you'd like a place to get your hair done, to come down and uh, support Tween Boutique. And we want to we wanna see you uh, thriving in the neighborhood. And that's, Thank that's, you. that's why we're here. So thanks, uh, thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I'll take that for me. So I, I don't know if you have ever seen or remember the game show, Let's, Let's Make a Deal. Uh, there was an old version, an older version that was on, I think like for 30 years back in the, in the 60s, I'm not as 70s, I'm not as familiar with that version. Uh, the, the host was Monty Hall. Uh, the newer version is, is Wayne Brady. I've seen that a couple times. Uh, but the, the basic gist, if you've never seen it, is there's, there's some curtains set up and there's some games that are played and people are dressed up funny. But uh, you get a chance to make a deal. You can sometimes pick what's behind the curtains. And, and sometimes what's behind the curtain is awesome. Like it's, it's cash or a vacation or a car. Or sometimes behind the curtain, it's something that you don't want, like a, like a goat. Or, or something like, uh, like that. Um, and, and you really, you don't know. It's just a guessing game. You don't know what's, what's behind curtain one, two, or, or three. Uh, in, the, in the New Testament letter that we're studying called Philippians, the author of the letter uh, is Paul, and he has several options in front of him. And, and he actually knows what the prize is behind each curtain. Uh, but he doesn't get to choose so it's kind of the game backwards. Like he knows what's there. He doesn't get to choose. Uh, and we would consider his options at this point. We'll get into them. One option's good. One option is not so good. So he's in prison. He's writing this uh, letter to his friends, people that he loves, this church that he has, he has poured his heart out to. And um, they're in a city hundreds of miles away. And he wants to encourage them. They're concerned about him. They know he's in prison. And in the portion of the letter we looked at last week, he writes to them and, and he says, you know, everything that's happened to me, it, the, the, the imprisonment has led to Jesus being known, being known in the prison, being known in Rome, because now the believers around me are, uh, they're, they're being bold in, in their faith. And so he's encouraging with these words and, and he rejoices that he, he sees God at work in the past and in the present. Like everything that's happened up to this moment, God is at work and he sees God's wisdom at work. And so we're going to pick up in the Philippians uh, 1, verse 18. Philippians 1, 18, uh, Paul says, But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. So he's saying, I rejoice right now in this moment for everything that, that God's done, for it's brought me to this point, I rejoicing. And then, then he's going to switch gears and he says, yes, I will continue to rejoice. So he's saying, I've rejoiced for what's happened in the past, present, but now he's changing his focus to what's happening and going to happen in the future. And he rejoices in that as well. And uh, now rejoice is not a uh, a word that we use often. It doesn't mean to, to joyce again. Like it's not in our normal vocabulary. But rejoice has that idea of, of joy or like even joyful expression. Or saying, hooray! It, uh, almost like this, this subtle happiness. And so Paul is, is chained to his prison guard. And I can just imagine what they're saying as, and thinking as he rejoices. So he says, I will continue to rejoice. And verse 19 says, for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the spirit, the spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. So he begins by reflecting on their prayers for him. He says, I, I know that through your prayers, I'm going to be delivered. And so Paul is alone, but he's not alone. Even though he's separated hundreds of miles through prayer, he is not alone. And we've seen this, this thread throughout Philippians chapter 1 that, that there is a partnership between Paul and these other believers in the gospel, even though they are separated by hundreds of miles. And, and, and Paul says that their prayers have led him having a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, 
and it's hard for us to, to get this in the English translation, but in, in Greek, the, the prayers are directly related to this provision of the Spirit, it says in the verse there, that Paul receives. Uh, you know, and sometimes Christians, we get hung up on, you know, being filled with the Spirit. Is that a one-time thing? Is that an ongoing thing? Is that a, what I can tell you is that Paul was filled with the Spirit, and here he receives a, an added provision of the Spirit for what he was going through, through their prayers. Some of the, uh, the old, older saints among us call this a, a fresh anointing. I don't know if you ever grew up in a church where they talked about the anointing of, of, of the Spirit, like just a fresh outpouring of the Spirit. And Paul, he, he receives that through their prayers. And I believe there's a lesson for us here, is that uh, we have been forced to be apart because of COVID, we can't be in, in the close proximity like we'd like to, but through our praying for one another, we can, can bring the Spirit of God into one another's lives. Like, think, think about that. Um, verse 20, we we'll continue. Paul says, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or death, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. To live is Christ and to die is gain. I'm going on living in this body. This will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I, I don't know. I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith so that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. So Paul isn't in prison. He's, he's waiting his trial and he's fully aware that his future, there are two options in front of him. Curtain one, curtain two. And, and he is being moved towards those curtains and, and he, he's in no control of which way he's about to go. It's a little bit like make a deal, except he has no choice. And very little, he has no, no choice. Death and life are before him. One good, one bad option. And, and these verses, they give us a mindset in, into Paul, like where, what he's thinking about, what he's going through. I mean, put yourself in his shoes for a moment. In, in prison, you don't know if you're going to be released. Like, what would, you, what would be going through your mind? Would you be rehearsing your life? Like, had you, had you made the most of every opportunity? Were there things that, uh, that you wanted to say that you didn't say? Things that were left unsaid? And so he, he goes back and forth, and it's almost like uh, he, he puts up the whiteboard and, and lists the pros and cons of each one. Like, what are the pros of living? Let's see, if I live, I can continue the fruitful ministry. I will help them progress in their faith. But if I die, if I die, I get Jesus, the goal of his faith, the goal of our faith. And what does he conclude? Which is better? So remember verse 19, he says, what has happened to me has turned out for my deliverance. Then he says, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or death, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. And, and we hear this term uh, deliverance, and we think that means, oh, set free, freedom. But the same word deliverance almost everywhere else in the New Testament is translated as salvation. As salvation. In fact, the King James Version, uh, instead of deliverance, uses sal, salvation. Uh, and when we think of salvation, we think of something that has happened to us, right? Something in the past. Christ died. He was raised again. I, I put my, my trust in him, and I go from being not saved to being saved, from walking in the darkness to walking in light to being not born again to born again. There's, there's this moment. There is something that happens when I can say, I was saved, right? That, and that is uh, absolutely true. But there's also this idea of salvation, of something happening in the present, something happening now, and something happening in the future. So we think of salvation, it's past tense. I have been saved from the penalty of sin. Present tense, I, have, I am being saved from the power of sin. In this moment, I am being saved. And a future tense, when I am saved from the presence of sin. And, and that presence of sin is not just an individual salvation. It is a salvation. It is God renewing the world. It is when Christ is exalted as king. Like it is that, that salvation. And so when Paul says that this is going to turn out for his salvation, I don't think he's, he, he's thinking of past tense salvation. 
I think he's more in the present tense, like what is God doing in my life now? Like this is gonna work out for my deliverance. And through this, I'm gonna be more like Christ. Because of the trials, because of the afflictions that I'm going through, I'm gonna be more like Christ. And if I die, I will finally be perfected and I will be like Christ. I will be without sin and, and sin will be no more. He says, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed. He says, but that Christ will be exalted in my body. And, and so he has this, he has the end game in mind, right? He, uh, life or death means salvation for Paul. Now, this is, this is not an easy thing. Like, this is advanced Christianity. Like, I'd say it's, you know, Christianity 101, but this is like, uh, uh, like graduate level kind of stuff because it's not easy to say, oh yeah, whether I live or die, good stuff, bad stuff, Christ be exalted. Like, but that's what we are called to. That's what we are called to. So he's saying either way, living or dying, I win. It's, it's a win-win proposition. But when we look at it, we're like living, being set free or dying, that sounds like a good and bad. But for Paul, he's like, mm, either way, I when he is not defeated, uh, it reminds me a little bit, I don't know if, if you've ever seen the uh, first Captain America movie, Steve Rogers. He, he becomes Captain America, but in the first movie, he's a scrawny little kid. He's undersized. He wants to go and fight in World War II, but he can't. He's got health issues, and, and there's this one scene. He's in this alley, and this guy who's twice his side is just pounding him, just going, going to town on him, and, and he gets up. His face is bloodied, and, and he lifts up in his fist, and he's like, I can do this all day. Like, I can do this all day. And what's the guy do? Pounds him in the face again, knocks, knocks him down. Uh, and it's like Paul in the prison just keeps getting up. He's like, I can, I can do this all day. I can do this all day. I mean, he is, he is triumphing. There is no despair in, in and what I hear in, in these words from Paul, and it's like, how? Why? Why, Paul? How, and how can you do that? Um, and I think it was because once Christ had apprehended Paul, Christ became the singular pursuit of his life. Christ became the singular pursuit of his life. He says to live is Christ. He has Christ, so he has life. And because of that, Paul's circumstances don't define him. Because he has Christ, the circumstances around him change, and they change often, but they do not define who he is. Christ is enough. And we see this in the opening chapter. If you just, in your Bible, underline every mention of Christ. 18 times Paul mentions Christ in that first chapter. Christ in verse 13, Christ be known. Christ be preached, verse 18. Christ be magnified in verse 20. So the question is, what, what is your life? What are you living for? What is it that makes your life worth living? For me to live is Christ. Because if you have a proper, addition, a proper definition of life, then there, there is nothing. There is nothing that can overwhelm you. There is nothing that can uh, destroy you. It's like, what is your bottom line? What is the most important thing to you? Um, so if you were to say, for me to live is, and you fill in the blank, what, what would it be? Uh, for some, they would say, for me to, to live is to have fun and enjoy life. Uh, and now, in this type of person, they, they might work hard. They might make a lot of money. They might not make money. But the job is just a means to an end. It's just a means to get to the weekend, like to get the fresh pow, uh, to get the next 14er. Um, like that, that is the goal. And if you take that away, like, you know, life is, it's, it's not the same. It's, it's all about recreation and pleasure. Uh, for others, maybe that's not you, but for others, maybe for, for you, say, for me to live is to be strong and in control. And, and maybe your life hasn't allowed you to, to seek some of the other pleasures of life. But in your family, the way you were raised, like for you, being, being together, having things put together, not letting your, your feathers get, get ruffled, like for you. And that's, that's where you find life. But don't, don't take that from you. Uh, for, for me to live is, is money. And to die is to, to leave everything behind. Or to live is, is family. And to die is separation. Or to live is to be a good person. And to die is to... 
be exposed for not as good as you want others to think you are. Uh, it, and so, I mean, life is, is full of, of tragedies. It's full of sorrow. And, and things that we have can be, be taken away from us. And we can even have things in our lives that are, are good things. Um, our, our family and, and, and working hard and enjoying God's creation. Like, I'm, I'm not saying we don't do that, but what is ultimate? What is life? Uh, this week, I listened to a, an interview with Gordon McDonald. Gordon McDonald was a pastor. He was an author. He wrote a book uh, called Ordering Your Private World that sold over a million copies back in the 80s. He was the, the president of InterVarsity. He was the chairman of World Vision, and he was president of Dem- Denver Seminary. And, and now he's 80 years old, and he's become a bit of a Christian sage, like just a wise man who has experienced life, who has followed Jesus. And in this interview, he is reflecting back on his decades of following Jesus and what for him have, have, has become like the most important things in his life. And he, he lists 15 things that for him have, have been trans, just kind of transformed the way he thinks. And one of the things he says, one of the 15 things that, that he wants uh, other believers to know and to focus on, to be thinking about, he says the time will come when you will have to relinquish titles and privileges and slip into obscurity. Ultimately, the obscurity of death. And so what he's, what he's reflecting on is that he had titles, the, the presidents of a seminary and nonprofits. And, uh, and then he talked about how all of his mentors have passed away. Most of his friends have passed away. And it was just a reminder to me that nothing is permanent. Nothing is permanent. And that we all experience loss, whether, whether it's now during the pandemic or whether it's later in life, whether the loss is all concentrated in a short amount of time or whether it's spread out, we all experience loss. What is life to you? Paul, Paul has lost his career in prison. Like he was called by God to take the gospel to the nations. He's been traveling around the Mediterranean, around the, the Roman empire. And now we can't do that. He can't go where he wants to go. He, he is in prison. He has lost his job, but his, his life has not crumbled. If, if you have ever lost your career and your life crumbled, then that says that for me to live was my job or was my career. And now that you've taken that away, I have nothing. That wasn't Paul's story. Paul's, his, Paul's friends had been taken from them. He, he wants to be with his friends, but he can't be. They've been taken from me, but his life is not destroyed. His life is not over. I mean, what are you going to do when your life is lying in the casket. When when it's been taken from you, when it is gone. So our our problem is not our circumstances, it's our definition of life. What is life? For me to live is Christ. Christ, do you know him? The crucified and risen Savior, our soon coming King. Do you know him? Is he life for you. So for Paul, living or dying, he wins. If he's executed, he gets the goal of his faith. He gets to be with Christ. Verse 23 says, I desire to depart and be with Christ. This isn't a death wish. This isn't a dissatisfaction with life. This isn't like, I'm tired of these trials. This is someone whose immediate future is uncertain. I mean, does that sound familiar? His immediate future is uncertain. But his his future circumstances his, his, is certain and it's to be desired. Like he, he knows, he's got the end game in mind. He knows what's waiting for him at the end. And so he says, to die is gain. But you can only say to die is gain if Christ is your life. If Christ isn't your life, then to die is loss. And, and death, death is a loss for those of us who do remain, for those of us who have lost loved ones. But if you are in Christ, to die is not a loss. To die is gain. And I just want to conclude with this, is that the reason that Christ can be our life is because Jesus was willing to give his life for us. Because he gave his life for us, Jesus was teaching one time and he said, I am the good shepherd the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And then he goes on, uh, 
just a bit later, says the same thing. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father, I lay down my life for the sheep. And so Jesus says, you are my life. You are my life. I give my life for you. So my, my question, my challenge for you today is, is Jesus your life? Is Jesus your life? Has, have you let other things become ultimate? Even, even for those of us who have followed Jesus for a while, there are times when, if we're honest with ourselves, we'll say, for me to live as Christ plus my family or, or plus my career or plus, and, and then if we're extra honest, the, the plus has become ultimate. So we just take a moment and just examine your heart. Would you, you, you may need to ask God's forgiveness. You may need to repent and just say, God, would you reorder the affections of my heart so that you are my life, so that you are my life. And maybe, maybe you've not given your allegiance to Jesus. Maybe you, you happened upon this video today or maybe someone invited you or shared on Facebook and you're, and you're watching and you, you kind of know about Jesus. Um, but we want to help you walk with Jesus. There, was, uh, there were two criminals next to Jesus when Jesus died on the cross. And one of the criminals turned to Jesus and said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And, and Jesus said, today, today you'll be with me in paradise. It, and that criminal had no chance to right his wrongs. He had no chance to, to set things right, but he didn't have to because Jesus took his sins on the cross and he'll take your sins as well. And if you want to put your trust in Jesus, we want to walk with you. We want to pray with you. There's a link in the comments. And if you want to take that next step and be baptized, you can mark that uh, on that link as well. We'd love to, uh, to fill up the, the water tank that we have. It'd probably have to be something uh, outside uh, in a backyard, maybe, maybe a, a mountain stream before it gets too cold here. But uh, we'd love to have a, a baptism service. So mark that if, if you're interested in, in being baptized. But let me, let me pray for us. Jesus, would you be our life? Would you be the one thing that we live for above all other things would we seek you whatever the circumstances are going on around us whatever is happening in our lives would we seek you so that when when others see our lives like like Paul said that that he would not be ashamed that he would have the courage that he would exalt you Jesus in his body and and Jesus we pray the same that you would be exalted through us you would be exalted through our lives. You would be exalted through the way that we go through this pandemic. Jesus, 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 help us. In your name I pray, amen, amen. We're gonna conclude with the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And may the Lord bless Tween Boutique. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you.